Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report, brought to you by Red Raider Outfitter, the Texas Tech fans' fave since 1975. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. My Joe, man, Texas Tech, Kansas State, 11 a.m. kickoff in the Little Apple. Kansas State's favored by seven, but look, Texas Tech's riding high uh, after that win over Texas, 3-1 start, 1-0 start in the Big 12. Just overall, where are you at going in this game uh, at, at Kansas State? Yeah, you know, this must have been uh, kind of a tough game for Vegas to come up with a line for because, right. I mean, you're coming with uh, two teams here that are off of big emotional upset wins, basically, you know. And then with uh, Kansas State, you've got a team that's kind of all over the place. I mean, lost yeah. to Tulane, go in uh, to Norman and beat those guys. So who knows what you're getting really with these right. guys. So it's this is kind of a tricky game. But, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a very, very competitive game. I, it's almost like a toss em to me. I think it's going to be uh, quite the battle. And it's going to go right down probably to the final uh, drive of the game, I think. Yeah, there's a couple of interesting things about this game. One being what you already mentioned, Kansas State losing to Tulane but beating Oklahoma. That's hard to wrap my mind around other than uh, college football is a week-to-week -week proposition. And you know what? Look, Texas Tech obviously two weeks ago, well, three weeks ago, beating Houston at home in overtime and then losing at NC State, a very good NC State team, then coming back home and upsetting Texas. Uh, now they're going to Kansas State where, let's be honest, they haven't had a lot of success just in general against the Wildcats, even some not so great Kansas State teams, Texas Tech has really struggled. They've actually lost, I believe, nine of the last 10 matchups with the only win coming on a senior day here in 2015 when DeAndre Washington ran for over 200 yards. So uh, there's a lot, just like there was a lot of history going against Texas Tech last week, there appears to be a lot of history going against the Red Raiders again, once again this week. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, to what extent does history influence the present? You know, right. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's easy enough to logically say, well, it has no effect whatsoever. I mean, what happened before is in the past. How right. could it have an effect? But, I mean, there's the, the mental side of it. I mean, these guys hear about it. Uh, we never beat K-State. So, uh, you know, is there anything like that going on? Right. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, but, you know, I mean, listen, um, like Joey McGuire seems to really have this team believing in itself believing in him uh, just seems to have the right mental edge with this team and I believe that that's probably uh, more than enough to sort of overcome any kind of you know uh, yips from historical results or anything like that so I don't think that's going to be a big factor um, and uh, you know I think Tech's got a shot at it I really do. No, I think just with Tech's defense the way that specifically well the whole defense but the defensive front the way it's played so far this year, if it continues to do so, they're going to be in a lot of ball games, Monty Joe, especially if Donovan Smith is able to take care of the ball like he did last week against Texas. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, so, I mean, uh, with with uh, Donovan, you know, you see the ability there. Yeah. You know, you see what he can do, but you just need the consistency. You know, one game to the next, uh, stringing multiple games together, playing well, and here's an opportunity because he played absolutely scratch football, lights out against Texas. Uh, you know, if he can uh, put another one together against Kansas State, then maybe you got something here at the quarterback position. So uh, this is a big game for him, too. Yeah, one of my uh, big reasons for optimism coming off the, the Texas game, beyond just, of course, how tough they, they played, the way they were able to bounce back after being down by two touchdowns in the second half, all those things are really good. But I really liked the game plan that offensive coordinator Zach Kidley had. I liked the short passing game. I liked that they stuck with the running game. Uh, I liked that... He, not, I think saying that he simplified things for Donovan Smith is an oversimplification. I think just the fact that he had less reads and at some times he said, hey, go here with the ball. We're going to run It's it, this situation. All that was really smart. And to me, it says good coaching, Monty Joe. I think there's a good chance we might see at least part of that moving forward the rest of the season. Uh, now, I asked Kitley about that on Monday in the press conference. And he was non-committal, of course, which I understand. He said, look, it's going to depend on, on the opponent. But I really think that suits the personnel. With the offensive line struggles, you have good running backs, and, and the short passing game to these receivers who are really good after, they, after the catch. Yeah, 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 I would agree. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, I think that it's, it's an interesting deal with, with Donovan Smith, you know. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, 
my feeling is that look, you know, if something worked as well as it did, yeah. apparently, you know, against Texas, uh, then then you have to more or less kind of go with that movie, particularly when you compare that with what happened at North Carolina State, right. which apparently you're talking about two rather different approaches there. One clearly worked very, very well. Yeah. The other one, not so hot. And both against good defenses, right. you know, so you can't necessarily say it's all on the opponent. So, you know, I, I think he's probably going to stick with that. And, uh, you know, my feeling is as Donovan gets more and more experienced in the offense, and he's still a young quarterback, right, right? Uh, then I think gradually you're going to see feeding more and more stuff back into it, returning a little bit more decision-making to him, uh, broadening, uh, opening up the playbook a little bit more, allowing him to make more decisions. But, I mean, that's going to be a slow, gradual process. And right now I think it's going to look more like what you saw against Texas than against North Carolina State. Now, Kansas State, I actually think, is a tougher challenge there than Texas at home. Uh, you know, Martinez just coming off a career game against Oklahoma. You have Deuce Vaughn. They have some good receivers. You know Kansas State is capable of playing a physical brand of football. You know they're going to play some good defense and special teams. Uh, it's a tough challenge. Now, I know Tulane was able to go there, what, three weeks ago or however long ago it was and win, but perhaps Texas Tech is facing a different opponent. And just how do you see – uh, Texas Tech's defense matching up with Kansas State's offense? Uh, you know, well, look, uh, look, Kansas State's got a, a basically a one-dimensional offense. They they don't throw the ball very much, and they don't throw it that well. Uh, Martinez's passing, passer rating, I forget what it is. It's <laughs> like 113 or something like that. The guy, and, and they only throw it, uh, I don't know, probably 40, 35% of the time, maybe okay. 40, uh, yeah. relatively low by today's standards. Uh, their offense is is the quarterback running, and it's Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, that's basically it. So you know what you're going to be facing. You know what you're going to get. It's a matter of stopping it. Now that's easier said than done. Right. You know, I mean, look, Nebraska under Tom Osborne, you knew exactly what they were going to give you, yeah. but nobody could stop it. Yeah. It's execution from those guys. So, uh, you know, I don't think this is a real complex sort of a situation for Texas Tech's defense. Uh, and frankly, I think with the guys they've got up front, they're pretty well built to keep this offense in check. Uh, I, uh, I don't think this is going to be a high scoring game. I think it's going to be in the twenties again, and we're seeing a lot of that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I believe Texas defenses will be up to the challenge and, uh, will keep this game within range. And so what's your key? Uh, you said it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to come down to another fourth quarter battle. Tech's yeah. already played two overtime games. Uh, and really just to play our way. Without that pick six, it was a competitive game there at NC State. Uh, what do you think is the key ultimately for Texas Tech getting out of Kansas State with a big road victory? Uh, it's going to be a uh, Texas Tech ground game, I believe. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, at times this year, uh, Texas Tech has run the ball effectively. At times they ran it effectively yeah. uh, against uh, Texas. Uh, and, you know, the offensive line, looks to be getting better you know and if that's the case uh and if texas tech is able to to get into them with that ground game you know which i think is possible i mean k-state is is good against the run but they're not great they're giving up 4.2 per carry that's okay. that's it's better than average but it's not spectacular i think tech can get something done uh on the ground against kansas state now if that happens then i believe texas tech is going to win uh but it's just a matter of the degree to which it happens i mean they've got uh uh, really, uh, I, you know, I think you're looking at around 150 yards on the ground to win. Uh, if they do that, they're going to get it done. Uh, so uh, to me, that's just really the key of it right there. Uh, otherwise, I mean, uh, K-State's defense is really, really tough. Uh, the seven interceptions up to this point, they, two, three guys each have two picks. Uh, you know, they're not easy to throw the football against, and they're excellent in the return game. Uh, they're, they're shutting people yeah. down and kickoff and punt returns, and then they're tearing it up on the other end. Uh, you don't want to punt to these guys too often, and um, so you got to think they're probably going to have a little bit of an edge in special teams. Uh, but uh, again, I think uh, the ground game is going to be the key for Texas Tech. You know, do you remember a time, it had to be before no. Snyder was there, that Kansas State wasn't excellent on special teams? Yeah, that's carried through, hadn't it? It really has. Yes, it has. Well, Monty Joe, I'm expecting a great one. Once again, Texas Tech at Kansas State. Number 25, Kansas State, which is what? This is the fourth consecutive ranked opponent. Of course, the following week, you go to Oklahoma State, who is also expected to be, who is currently and expected to still be uh, in the top 25. So that's amazing. Five consecutive 
uh, top 25 teams in a row. I, that's just that that's a gauntlet there. But uh, you know what? This team appears ready for. It. They appear uh, tough and battle tested and so we'll see what they do this week in manhattan i can't wait to see what happens mighty joe great stuff from you as always thank you all for watching and until next time